Lots of people these days are, are becoming interested in bees and trying to identify the bees in their garden. And one of the first obstacles people tend to come across is actually telling what is a bee and what isn't a bee. And actually it's surprisingly difficult, um, particularly because uh, there are lots of insects pretending to be bees. Um, uh, deliberately, they've evolved over many years um, to mimic bees because bees have a sting and therefore lots of predators that might otherwise try and eat an insect will think twice if it looks a bit like a bee. Uh, but that obviously adds to the challenge when you're identifying them. So bees actually technically um, uh, evolved about 120 million years ago. Uh, it was basically a, a wasp turned vegeta uh, vegetarian back in the, in the age of the dinosaurs. And the 20,000 bee species in the world today um, are all descended from that, that one bee. But that doesn't help you to identify them. Technically one of the diagnostic characteristics of, of bees is they have branching hairs but they're microscopic so that's a precious little help when you're looking at an insect in the garden. Um, so I'm just going to give you a, a few tips on to sort of beginner's guide to deciding whether the thing you're looking at is a bee or not a bee. So let's have a quick lesson in kind of basic insect anatomy. So all insects um, have three body parts. So we've got the head, the thorax, the middle bit, and the abdomen, the back half. The head obviously has the eyes, compound eyes, googly eyes, made of lots of little cells and uh, yeah, it's where the antennae are attached so let's give it a pair of antennae it's also obviously where the, the mouth is if it's a bee it would have a tongue which is normally folded under the head but which can flip out to feed on flowers there all insects are basically made of segments so it isn't always obvious uh, and the legs and wings are always attached to the thorax the middle bit so there we go there's always uh, on, on the sort of basic insect design has excuse my drawing has two pairs of wings forewing and a hind wing In case of bees they're actually hooked together with little hooks and they beat together and act as, as effectively as one wing okay so let's give it a bit of fur See, not all insects have fur, but bees do, particularly bumblebees. Uh, so we need some legs on the thorax as well. So let's do some kind of stylized legs. Uh, da, 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 da. And uh, it's more obviously insects have six legs. And in the case of bees, um, many bees like bumblebees and honeybees the back legs uh, are adapted for collecting um, uh, collecting pollen they have a pollen basket on their back legs made of stiff bristles so there we go there we have a basic bee okay now let's see how that differs from a fly so again the fly has the same body parts roughly head thorax abdomen and again it's segment segmented and it, again it has six uh, six legs bear with me while I add in some legs It has eyes, which in the case of things like hoverflies, which are one of the ones that are most commonly mistaken for um, bees, they're very large, they're a little bit larger than bees' eyes, although you won't see much difference the way I've drawn them. 
And flies also have some kind of tongue for drinking nectar if they're fly visiting flies, like hoverflies, which sometimes is, is similar to a bee's tongue, other times has a kind of spongy end to it, but that's not very obvious. So everything so far is more or less the same as, as the bee. What's the difference? Well, the, there are two really key differences that should help you to tell a fly from a bee. Firstly, the antennae. The bee has these big antennae, a very sort of linear, um, fairly obvious antennae. You should be able to see them very easily. Whereas most species of fly that you might mistake for a bee have really tiny antennae. They're just kind of little odd shaped things that stick out from the front of their face and can barely see them. You might struggle to see them at all unless it's a big fly. And then the other thing which is really key is that they only have one pair of wings. They've actually, lot they, in their evolutionary history, they had two pairs of wings, um, but the hind wings have been kind of massively reduced to a thing called a whole tear, which looks like a little kind of blob on a stalk, um, which actually flaps up and down, helps the flies to, to balance. So there you have it. So this sometimes a fly do have hairs, particularly ones that are pretending to be uh, bumblebees. We'll see one of those in just a second. Um, but key difference is tiny antennae, big antennae, one pair of wings, two pairs of wings. Now that I should say the hind wing in bees is sometimes quite hard to spot. It's quite small, it's transparent. You have to have a good look to see that they have two pairs of wings. The antennae is actually the single easiest thing to look at to look out for. Okay, so let's have a look at some pictures of some real insects. So first up, look at this beauty, gorgeous insect. Um, so is it a bee or is it a fly? Well, um, look at the antennae. You can't see the wings to count them, but you can clearly see the antennae touching the flower. Um, they're big, they're long, they're sort of linear, they're, they're um, very easy to see. Uh, this is a bee, it's a bumblebee, it's actually an early bumblebee, Bombus protorum. One of our prettiest bees, I think, lovely creatures. Okay, then second, we have um, this creature. What do you think? Um, look again closely at the antennae, and same as the last one, you'll see... It has fairly obvious antennae. Again, actually touching the flower. Of course, that's, they use their antennae as a sort of scent and taste. This is another bumblebee. This is the common carda bumblebee. And it's a very common bee indeed. You find that in every garden in the UK, as long as you've got a few bee-friendly flowers. Okay, next up, is it a bee or is it a fly? So look at the antennae. Um, and hopefully you can see straight away that they're completely different. The antennae here are these funny little fluffy things. They look a bit like a kind of bizarre um, moustache on the front of the insect. And look at the wings. How many wings can we see? Well, there's just one pair, one each side. Uh, this is a fly. It's a type of hoverfly that mimics bumblebees. This one is trying to look like a red-tailed bumblebee, one of our common bumblebee species. Really beautiful, big, furry flies. Gorgeous, gorgeous creatures. Um, it's actually a, 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 a kind of parasite of, of bumblebees. It, um, uh, the larvae live uh, inside bumblebee nests, um, scavenging. Um, okay, so that is definitely a fly, not a bee. What about this one? Hopefully, you can see straight away, this is also a fly. It's actually believe it or not, the same species as the last one. Um, that This species, uh, Volucella bombillans, um, comes in different colour morphs that resemble, have evolved to copy different species of bumblebee. So this is trying to copy something like perhaps a garden bumblebee, which has several yellow stripes and a white tail. But uh, it's very much a fly. Okay, what's this? Hopefully, by now, you're getting the idea. This is a bee. This is a red mason bee, one of our, uh, the commonest species that you'll find if you have a bee hotel. Again, look at the antennae. It's hard to spot how many wings it's got, but believe me, it's got two pairs. What about this one? 
This may well be a familiar insect to you if you live in the southern half of the UK. Um, it's an ivy bee. Uh, again, look at the antennae. Nice, simple, linear antennae. Um, the ivy bees are on the wing late in the summer and they come out when the ivy flowers in sort of September, October. So they're actually the last of the bee species to emerge in the UK. Okay, what about this one? What do you think? Can't count the wings from that angle, but look at the antennae. Or oh, actually, you struggle to see any. They're so tiny. There's a little, they're kind of a pair of little tiny whiskers on the face of the insect. This is a drone fly. It's a, it's a fly pretending to actually be a honeybee. Uh, quite easily mistaken for a honeybee from a distance, but close up the antennae are a dead giveaway. So, yet another fly. And then this, these are beautiful. I absolutely adore these creatures. Um, but what is it? Uh, so these are on the wing now. It's, uh, it's early April. They're on the wing for the first uh, uh, sort of first half of spring. Um, there's several in my garden. Uh, is it a bee or is it a fly? Well, this is a bit different. The antennae are sort of um, a bit more obvious than on some of the flies you've seen, but nowhere near as long as, um, as in um, the bees we've seen. And if you look at this, it's the same species. Um, you can see quite clearly it has one pair of wings. So this is another type of fly that mimics a um, uh, mimics bumblebees. Um, and it has this spectacular, long, rigid um, proboscis for drinking nectar from deep flowers. Um, beautiful, beautiful creatures. Also, interestingly, parasites of solitary bees. They um, uh, they, they, they lay eggs and then kind of flick them with their feet in through the entrance holes of ground nesting solitary bees. Uh, a clever trick if you can do it. Okay, just to mix things up a bit, what do you think this is? Bee or a fly? Well, actually, I'm cheating slightly. This is a wasp. Um, it's, uh, but wasps and bees are closely related. Wasps tend to be less furry. Um, but otherwise the structure is very similar, the antennae are very similar, they have two pairs of wings. Um, so yeah, that's a wasp and that is a fly pretending to be a wasp. Again, look at the antennae, that's another species of hoverfly. One pair of wings, funny little antennae. So this is completely harmless, it has no sting at all, whereas the wasp of course does. And what about this? I'm being awkward here, throwing something in to catch you out. Um, this uh, is a wasp beetle. Um, just another beautiful example of uh, mimicry of creatures that are actually themselves harmless, defenseless, pretending to be something they're not. Um, so this beetle has evolved yellow and black stripes to make it at least superficially resemble uh, a wasp so that uh, predators won't eat it. So it's over to you, go outside, uh, find some flowers and see what's buzzing about and then see if you can work out what it is you're looking at. Is it a bee or not a bee? Have fun.